I, I've seen other people get interested in things and they get interested and they fall out really quickly. So if, if that's your personality, um, you, it, you might have to get in and prove it. And, you know, and I think she saw that <clears throat> I was in, I was proving it. I started taking classes to become a real estate agent. I was studying every night. I was looking into this stuff. I was talking about it constantly, which was probably annoying. Welcome. This is the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping others through real estate investing. Our hosts interview guests from all aspects of real estate investing who generously share valuable experiences and advice. Whether you're starting out or an experienced investor, this is the show for you. Hello and how's it going? Welcome to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast where we interview guests who want to help others investing in real estate. My name is Travis Shelton, host, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to an amazing conversation with a good personal friend, uh, Jake Kane, who's a local Phoenix realtor, a team leader, investor, and host of the of a local uh, Freedom Meetup. Jake, bro, thanks for joining me today. Travis, man, uh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to this for a while now. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I know your time's valuable. But um, and and you're big time now, I think. But uh, <laughs> t tell our audience a little bit more about yourself. You know, maybe where you're from, and you know, how'd you get in involved in real estate? Yeah, so actually, I'm uh, from Phoenix, Arizona, born and raised. Um, and I was kind of in, you know, I came from the W two world. I was kind of going through like high school. I kind of got into some um, like drafting classes. Got really interested in like architecture and engineering and, and mm. stuff like that. Um, so I was kind of working my way up through there, went to college, um, just kind of going that route. So I was working as a W-2 employee, as a, like a CAD technician. <clears throat> okay. And 2016 was kind of like a transformational period for me, a transformational year. I was coming up on the last, uh, on the last end of my, uh, contract with the Arizona Army National Guard. Um, I was also kind of in a spot at work at W-2, at my W-2 job where I was trying to figure out kind of what's next for me um and so i kind of found like personal development and real estate investing at the same time um nice. which is kind of cool because they kind of i mean even to this day they kind of coincide with each other so for sure we always start our shows off with some motivation so uh i always ask our guests to bring on some a motivational quote so jake can you share yours with our audience today yeah so my i'm not going to read the whole quote just because it's kind of a lengthy one but my favorite quote that's kind of stuck with me um, since close to the beginning is The Man in the Arena by um, Teddy Roosevelt. Um, the reason why this one's important to me is just because every time I read it and no matter what kind of season of life that I'm in, um, there's just different parts that kind of stick out to me. I think overall, it's just the, the, the biggest thing for me is the fact that like not everybody can understand kind of what you're going through um, mm -hmm. and, and life is just a big you know it's a big challenge and so i think for me personally i growing up one of the hurdles that i kind of had to get over was always constantly trying to like break out of this perfectionism mold and then also mm -hmm. worried about so much uh, other people's opinions um so that's why the quote to me is just it, it just means a lot to me um and it's kind of just changed over over time so Man, we're, we're, we're more alike than you know. And uh, I, like I told you before we hit record, like it was super powerful for me to read this quote. I hadn't actually read the quote before. Oh, okay. Um, but I, I'm, I'm the same. You know, I think, you know, as a, a pharmacist by training, we're, we're taught to be perfect, perfectionist, mm -hmm. right? You can't make an error or you can cause harm to somebody else. And just, you know, straight A student going through school and just someone that was, you know, uh, you know, didn't measure backwards. And, and if I make, you know, if you get a 98%, you're worried about that one question you got wrong. Yep. So, and really always caring about mo too much about what people think. And, um, I love that cause I think we're both aligned with that personal development with, with the love of real estate investing. So thanks for sharing that quote. And, uh, definitely if you haven't read it, get out there and read, uh, Theodore Roosevelt's the man in the arena. Um, really good quote. Okay, Jake, now let's transition over to really the main part of our conversation today. And how can you help our audience of real estate investors? Yeah, actually. So, um, one of the biggest things I wanted to focus on was, um, like getting out there and making connections. 
uh, building mm-hmm. relationships, uh, being relational, not transactional, uh, collaborating with other other investors and other people in your marketplace. Um, I think that's such an important, that's probably the most important. I think for me is just uh, understanding that this journey isn't, isn't, doesn't need to be run solo, like getting out there and creating a team and meeting others and kind of um, just connecting with those people is ultimately how you kind of get to the next level. And, you know, you know, I couldn't agree more, but what are some ways that, that you personally kind of got out there and networked yourself or, or that you're currently networking with, with other investors and, and agents and people in your community? Uh, meetups, local meetups for sure. Uh, that's something that I probably heard on the podcast, the Bigger Pockets podcast back in the day when I first got into real estate investing, um, started going. That's how me and you connected. Uh, I got mm-hmm. came out to your meetup back back in the day before I ever started. And I think it's just kind of understanding, you know, the level that you're at, but put yourself out there. It doesn't matter. And I think if you go to a few of these local meetups and you get into the right communities, um, you're going to be welcomed no matter what level that you're at. Um, everyone here is super helpful and we all, you know, that's the whole name of the show, right? We all like helping each other and, um, it's kind of exciting to see, you know, brand new investors all the way to seasoned investors come in and just kind of pick each other's brains and see how we can help each other grow. So definitely get out there in your local market. Now I love that. And, <laughs> and it is such a unique world. I feel like real estate investing and so collaborative and, uh, I do have to appreciate and throw out, you know, Jake went straight from the Bigger Pockets podcast to my podcast. So I, I really feel very honored and special, you know, that, you know, he was able to get interviewed for the Bigger Pockets podcast and then, you know, graced me with his, <laughs> his presence today. But, uh, you know, so would you recommend to someone maybe getting started in real estate investing, um, you know, or like when is the point where maybe you should consider starting your own meetup or what kind of made you consider starting your own personal meetup? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. Um, I I honestly truly believe you can start at any any time, really. I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing, and just being 100% honest, for me, the hard thing was getting over kind of that imposter syndrome. I know me and you have talked about that a little bit in the past. Um, I think when you're kind of like a leader of anything or an organizer, uh, you're we're, we're our own like hardest critic, right? And so we kind of Always. expect that we need to be the guy at the front of the room that knows everything. But I mean, when you kind of take this approach and, you know, we're up there, but we're, we're more or less up there just to, to build a community and bring people together. We're not up there because we know everything. So, um, as long as you can kind of get over that and understand that you don't need to be the head guy, you're just more or less of, um, the hub for everybody to get together. I don't, I mean, I encourage it. I think the reason why we started ours was just, we saw, um, something extra that we could bring that wasn't really Mm -hmm. available at the time. And so we just wanted to, you know, we figured why not us? So absolutely. You know, and you guys do, uh, you and Jason have an amazing, you know, meetup that I also attend and support. And, uh, you know, you guys got a lot of great real estate investors that show up to it. And definitely I think when your heart is in the right place and the focus is giving back and just connecting people, um, you know, the sky's the limit. So yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, I, you know, kind of transitioning gears now, you know, we're, we're both in this spot where we have these W twos and, uh, we have these wives, amazing wives with W twos as well. Um, tell me like who, who, who got sparked into real estate investing first? Was it you? Was it Heather kind of, and then how did, how did the other one kind of come along in that in that story? Yeah, so it was it was me. So like I had mentioned in the beginning, I was I was working the W two. I was kind of trying to find my next move there. Um, I was getting out of the military, and I found investing, and I started listening to the podcast, reading the books, kind of what people normally do. And <clears throat> um, I mean, Heather was already in the field. She she was an interior designer. She was working for an architecture mm-hmm. firm at the time. So. I, I think like our first real conversation was we were just like at the, you know in the kitchen or at the dinner table and I just said like what is what what would you do if you didn't have to like if you didn't have to work like that's all I brought it out I didn't even say anything yeah. like hey let's do this let's I was just like let's just dream real quick what would you do if you didn't have to work and then it kind of just snowballed from there and then I think we just started talking about it and just kind of like what you said like I had to kind of 
um, prove it in a sense and not sure. necessarily for her, but I think for a lot of people, I, I've seen other people get interested in things and they get interested and they fall out really quickly. So if, if that's your personality, um, you, it, you might have to get in and prove it. And, you know, and I think she saw that <clears throat> I was in, I was proving it. I started taking classes to become a real estate agent. I was studying every night. I was looking into this stuff. I was talking about it constantly, which was probably annoying. Um, which is another <laughs> reason why the meetups help. Um, yeah. but yeah, so I think it was just kind of, I was showing it, you know, I wasn't just talking about it. I was showing that I was taking action towards it, um, which also kind of helped bring it to life. So I think it just casting the vision and then it got her excited about it and she could see where she fat is she, where she fit into the vision as well. Well, and you did the work, right? And I think that's like, uh, you, you got to have the support from the wife, you know, if you can't go and kind of go on your own journey and, and be doing all this crazy, you know, spending all these hours out at meetups, just drinking beer, right? right? They probably think you're just drinking beer, like hitting on other people. Yeah. It's like, no, you're really networking <clears throat> with, you know, other real estate investors, or I know Heather comes to meetups mm -hmm. with you and Aaron comes with me whenever she can. Um, but it's, it's really cool to see him out there. And, um, you know, I've had the pleasure of seeing both of you guys kind of, um, you know, further develop over the last couple of years and just get more comfortable, um, at these, at the meetups. And I'm the same. I had to really prove it with Aaron and my wife, uh, that I was a real estate investor, not just a dabbler. Cause as yeah. I think as an entrepreneur, I always have these crazy ideas. Yep. Like I almost bought a Jimmy John's franchise in pharmacy school. Like I've, you know, so I think she hears some of these stories and it wasn't until really I, I did the, you know, started really making money on some of my investments that she was like, Hmm, you know, yeah. this, this might be, this might be a, a good direction, but I love, love, love the question that you asked her. Um, and that's really what, um, man, I'd, sh I'd, I'd want, I want our audience, you know, of investors, you know, ask your wife, your, your significant other, uh, that sort of question, you know, what would you do if you didn't have to work? And man, that's just such a great like date night question, yeah. and and uh, yeah, because yeah. it kind of I mean, it's probably a good one to ask all the time. Yeah, and it kind of just gives you, it takes the pressure off of anything behind investing and all. It's not even about that. It's just you know what what makes you happy. It's like those questions: what makes you happy? Yeah. Um, what makes you fulfilled? Uh, you know, what would you do if you didn't have to work? If you didn't have to worry about bills? Because that's where our I feel like our true selves and our most fulfilled, happy inner us comes out so and it's easy to work hard towards that too you know it's like it's hard to work <clears> for <throat> someone else's success but it's when it's your success and you're like well this is what i would do or this is where i would travel and and when you have that goal and that plan uh i know you you guys are people that are will do anything to be able to kind of achieve that success and i see how hard both of you guys all work and um it's really amazing to see your guys' development over the last couple years um so since we talk a little bit about development, talk about talk to me a little bit about your personal development and what are some things, maybe books you read or people you follow or, you know, what has helped you in the development of yourself um, as an entrepreneur, as a as a man, as a, as a real estate investor? Always constantly improving. Um, you're never really fully finished. Um, there's always another level and then just kind of accepting that. And I think. Uh, the biggest hurdle for me, like we talked about previously, was um, kind of letting go of that perfectionism in the sense that just have some grace with yourself, understanding that you're, you are improving, you are working on where you want to get to, and, 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 but you're perfect at where, at where you are. Yeah, can't talk. That's you good. are perfect um, for what you need to be like right now. Um, yeah. but I think for me, it's just, yeah, podcast books. <clears throat> I've read so many different books and I, and I, well, I will say that I kind of teeter back and forth between, you know, I'm super into real estate investing and learning as much mm -hmm. as I can there, but I will kind of get to a point where I almost kind of cap. Yeah. I almost kind of cap out yeah. for a minute and then I go back to the, mm -hmm. the investing books, you know, um, I, I just finished, um, Oh dang, what's that one? High performance habits. Haven't listened okay. haven't yeah. listened to that one since probably the beginning. So, you know, revisiting things because it hits you differently at different parts so, of your life. So true. So I think the first yeah. time I read it, I, w I was just kind of fresh and I didn't really know what to do with it. And to so now the whole time I'm listening to that book and I'm just like, holy crap, this just means so much more. 
Um, yeah, you pick up different tidbits yeah. and where, where you are in your journey and how you can kind of exploit that concept or thought. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely, there's a handful of books <clears throat> I try to read every year just yep. because um, they fire me up like Atomic Habits Atomic or, Habits. you know, even Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. I mean, those are just, you know, some, some constant ones that I always read. Um, how to influence, yeah, how to influence people or how to win friends and influence people has always been a staple. And then also outwitting the devil is another great book. Um, for mm. just, I have not read that. You have Oh, check it out. It's awesome. Okay. It's, it's a good book. It's, um, those are good ones just to kind of revisit every now and then. Cause I think even as, uh, entrepreneurs, high performers, um, we go through cycles too. Um, hundred percent. Everyone's, I think as I remember myself and even to this day, I, I still catch myself doing this, but I see someone that, you know, that I, that I admire the, like a mentor of mine, and then I just kind of hold them to this higher regard. Like they have everything figured out. Like nobody has it all figured <laughs> out. Everyone's still figuring stuff out. So yeah, um, I I think when when you were mentioning something that the, the thought that it kept coming through my head was like enjoy the journey, and that's something I'm trying to. It's like all these little struggles or little setbacks or even your successes. It's like you got to enjoy that whole ride and that whole journey. And real estate investing has a lot of ups and downs. Yep. So like you just have to enjoy it. And you can't ever think, like you said, you're always learning something new. Uh, you're always advancing. And what I think about that, like what you had mentioned was, you know, 1% a day. You get, yep. you know, take one step forward every day, get 1% better every day, 1% smarter every day. And, you know, at the end of the you know, a long time, all that compounding really results in amazing results. And I think if you're, we're all our hard, harshest critics, like we both have mentioned. Um, but when you're looking at that, like, Hey man, that's an easy goal every day. Just yeah. get, get a little bit better. And, yeah. and you know, that long-term success is going to be there. It's true. And I think, um, one of my buddies told me this the other day, cause you know, I mean, again, I like to be super honest with people and we all, mm -hmm. we all have days that we struggle and, you know, it's one of those days that was just kicking my, kicking my butt. So I was just texting him about almost being done with the Airbnb and he kind of just reminded me like, Hey, it's really hard to see your own success when you're in the mud like that. And it's just, yeah. just hearing that, I'm just like, man, you know what? You're right. Like so much to be thankful for and grateful for. And, um, sometimes when you're grinding, it's really tough to just kind of like get back and see everything that you're doing and you're accomplishing and just be, just be proud and grateful for it. So. Yeah, man, that's powerful. Hi, my name is Chris Hallam of Simplicity Lending Group and powered by Nexa Mortgage. I'm a trusted and experienced loan officer who will work with you to find the best mortgage options for your needs. From first time home buyers to experienced investors, I have a wide variety of loan options and competitive rates, which makes me the perfect choice for those who are in need of creative financing. Contact me today and take the first step towards financial stability. I think it's time to throw you into the hot seat. You ready? Yes, let's do it. All right. Well, uh, our final four hot questions are sponsored by Homes with Hallam, uh, but we'll kick it off, Jake, with what is one book you'd recommend to someone wanting to know more about real estate investing? So real estate specific, this was a, a little bit tough for me. I've read a lot of real estate books, but um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go with Set for Life from by Scott Trench just because it's that like foundational book and, you know, yeah. kind of go, go back to the, what we talked about, about why we started our meetup and everything. Um, we have those uh, strong feelings for having the tie to the foundational side of it and, and starting with a, a solid um, foundation to build on. Um, so... Lots of good books out there that can go any different direction, but I'm going to have to go with the uh, Set for Life. Sure. That one is actually the leader in the clubhouse so far. I think really? It's been recommended three or four different times. Okay, yeah, so it's, cool. it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's a great book. I've read yeah. it too, but it's like, I almost need to go back to it because everyone's recommending it. It's one of those um, books what, where I just wish like, right, that I knew or I had right when I started. Like I needed that. Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's a relative, what's it like two or three years old anyway. Yeah. So it's one of those like, yeah, anyone getting started now, that's a great oh, foundational yeah. starter for a hundred percent. Um, what's your favorite productivity tip or trick or, you know, maybe uh, a way that you save time. I'm going to go with the focus mode on my phone. So, um, I'm a, I'm a recent, uh, Samsung to Apple switch guy, okay. um, but either phone has it so you can do it. Um, I've used it on both, but when I found that out, that, that helped me a lot. Cause I'm a big shiny object, squirrel, entrepreneurial brain type guy. So, yep. um, I mean, I've helped 
even just in the gym. Uh, mm -hmm. Put it on that, or if you're trying to focus on a task, put it on that just so you're not getting all this. I mean, we're so inundated yeah, with squirrel brain. Yeah, yeah, we've got notifications. As entrepreneurs, and, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah, texts, and that'll make me think of something else, and I'm all over the place. So uh, definitely focus on it. I love it. it. All right, what's your biggest real estate mistake or failure, and what did you learn from that experience? So I want to talk about so our very first purchase that we did. Um, okay. So we sold a house, and then we planned on buying a multifamily that didn't work out. So we just you know we bought a townhouse, we bought what we could we could afford, we felt comfortable mm -hmm. with, and <clears throat> I found out through our tenant that we our tenant that we inherited that the um, unit next door, so it's a it's a Gemini twin home, so it shares a wall. So it's basically a okay. dupla duplex, we just don't own both sides. So the other side was empty. So I did the whole new real estate investor thing and I skip traced the guy and I called him and I'm like, I wanna buy your place. And so he wanted $10,000 more than what we paid for my house that it appraised for. And I just remember, I was like, I'm not paying him $10,000 more. And yeah. I, that's the only one that I really kick myself for not buying to this day. Um, <laughs> so it's just one of those things where it's like, uh, I guess the lesson from there is at, just don't, you know, don't be so hard on things and, and kind of like what I tell when I help clients buy and new investors getting started is sometimes you just need to take action and stop trying to swing, mm -hmm. stop trying to swing for the fences. Like you don't need a home run. Um, if it's something yep. that can work, uh, you might be surprised at how well it works later on. And, you know, this is a long game, so don't, don't blow up deals over five, 10 grand sometimes if they're, if they're going to pencil out for you. Yeah. I think it's can, an ego can thing. Can say it too. any better. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, everyone wants the home run, right? Yeah. Like you said, it's sexy, but those singles and doubles a lot of times turn into triples and home runs. And so, um, yeah, you said it perfectly, man. Um, so Jake, if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Uh, definitely just being a go-giver, uh, giving back. I, I, I've just f fully believed in, you know, I, I forget, I'll probably butcher the quote now, but it's like, you're going to get everything you want out of life if you help enough people get what they want. Um, yep. and I don't know if that's true, but that's what I believe. And I just want, I just, I have a good feeling about connecting people, helping people, um, you know, whether that benefits me or not, it doesn't matter. It's just all about, you know, kind of lifting everybody else up. So if it's one thing, then it's just, you know, I hope somebody is just like, man, I, that guy helped me out with this or whatever it is. So no, that's awesome. And actually like on my show one, that's what I talk about is that Zig Ziglar quote and the whole premise of, you know, my meetup and this podcast is that exactly. <clears throat> and why I ask you guys all to come on here and give and give and give because you know that's all going to come back to all of us everyone on this podcast and more and you are definitely a go-giver my friend um you know if i know i've hit you up when i'm doing a flip or a transition of a home and you're always willing to share resources and contacts you give a lot back um from your freedom uh you know meet up and you're somebody that i know um every one of your clients probably is in or i know they're all in great hands when you're representing them because you go above and beyond for everyone and uh, really appreciate you, Jake, uh, coming on the show today. How or where is the best place for our hot REI community to connect with you? Yeah, uh, first of all, I, thank you, man. I appreciate you so much. You've, uh, you've really helped me out along the line. You know, I started brand new at your meetup and you've always been super supportive of me and uh, Jason and I when we were starting our meetup. And um, it's really cool to be sitting here with you now and, and having conversations like this. And I really look forward to the same thing. I look forward to coming out to your meetups and our time together and just hanging out. So thank you, man. I really appreciate it, honestly. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the best place to get a hold of me, Instagram, uh, at Jake underscore Kane, K-A-I-N. Nice. And we'll include all Jake's contact information, phone number, and uh, links to his meetup and his Facebook group. Um, and I definitely highly recommend if you're in the Phoenix metro area to, to make a freedom uh, meetup and then, uh, you know, network with other real estate investors. Uh, it's, it's really a great group and community that, uh, you know, him and Jason are, are building and have built already. 
And uh, dude, Jake, just again, thank you, brother. Uh, really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this uh, a lot, our conversation today. Uh, you know, those of you guys listening, you know, if, if, you, if you're thinking about real estate investing, get out there, go to meetups, you know, join your local Azrias or your Rias. Um, but those, those cost money. A meetup doesn't cost a lot of money. Get out there, network, talk to other investors, see what they're doing. Um, and yeah, definitely recommend Jake and my meetup if you're in the Phoenix area. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a best ever day. Take care. God bless and peace. Thank you for listening to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast. Check out our website, hotrei.com, for additional content and resources. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave a review so we can continue to bring even more value to others through real estate investing.